Hi everyone, welcome to the uh, Missouri Historical Society's Virtual Homeschool Day Craft Room. Uh, our theme for October 2020 is Beyond the Ballot, Voting in St. Louis. My name is Carla and today I'm going to show you how to make some decorative voting pins or buttons uh, made out of paper since we're not able to be here in person and use our button machine. So um, buttons have been around for a very long time. Um, Abraham Lincoln used them in his um, election and as he was running for president. And they've been a very popular way to spread the message um, out about political campaigns or voting ever since. And suffragists also used them in their fight to get the vote to get the right to vote. So um, these buttons you can use, um, I put a pin, I'll show you how to add a pin on the back um, so that you can wear them. Um, I also made one since we have an election coming up um, so that you can share with your grown-ups that they can wear or you can wear to encourage people in your family um, and out in public to vote. Or you can save them as a souvenir um, to recommend or to uh, commemorate the 19th Amendment. We just had the anniversary, the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote. Although many people of color, many women of color, were still fighting for that right for a long, long time. So um, as you can see, I have the suffragist buttons or pins in um, yellow, gold, or gold, white, and purple. And that's because those colors um, were very significant to the suffragist movement. Um, the gold was actually adopted by um, Susan B. Anthony and uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Um, back in 1867 when Kansas was trying to, they were considering um, a, uh, a um, let's see, what were they considering? Um, passing a suffrage law. So they were one of the earliest states to consider that. Um, and this the state flower for Kansas is the sunflower, and that's why they picked the color gold or yellow. Um, white didn't come along until a little bit later when they started holding parades so that they could um, get attention. They encouraged all of the women participating in these parades to wear white dresses. And then um, they combined that with yellow sashes. Sometimes they would wear pins and buttons. Um, and also uh, for the golden line, or the golden lane, um, in 1916, I believe it was, they um, demonstrated at the Democratic National, um, the National Democratic Convention <laughs> in St. Louis. That was held in St. Louis. And if you want to learn more about that, you can go to our Beyond the Ballot exhibit, um, which is open. So um, now I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you actually this version, um, which is a rosette. Um, sometimes these style of pins are called cockades, C-O-C-K-A-D-E. And that just basically means uh, a rosette or a knot of ribbons that they um, would put on their hats or sometimes on their lapel. And um, it was just a different, an old fashioned word for calling those buttons. So the first one we're going to do is this style right here. Um, what you're going to need is you're going to need two strips, about eight inches in length, of paper. And then you're going to, I'm going to, you're going to fold them accordion style, and I'm going to give you a hint on how to do that. Um, first, you're just going to fold your eight inch strip into half, and that's about one and a, uh, I think it's about one and a quarter inch in diameter. Um, now, one and a half inches across. And you're going to fold it in half. Then you'll fold it in half on each side. Fold the folded halves in half again. And then it looks like that. Then you can open it up and start your accordion folds just by using those folds as a guideline. That way all of your folds will be even um, and they're about a quarter of an inch thick. So I'm going to move that out of the way. And oh, once you get your two accordions, you're going to glue them together. So you're going to end up with something like this, a little flower or ring. Um, when you glue them together, though, you're going to make sure that one end is up and one end is down. Then you will glue them together like that and have one long strip. And then you're going to glue those other ends together. So hopefully that makes sense. Once you get your little um, circle together, you say after your glue dries, and I would, I would suggest using craft glue instead of glue stick to glue those so it'll hold it a lot sturdier. 
Um, what you're going to do then is you're going to kind of crush it down and fold it in. Now this is the tricky part because you're going to have to um, hold it together. And I would suggest using some craft glue, and I'm going to use a little stick here and put some craft glue on my stick and just put some glue along the edges like that. And then um, try to crush it together. Okay. And I forgot to tell you, you're also going to want to have your, um, some circles that you're going to use for your pin. You're going to have, want those um, cut out. You're going to need two, actually, one for the back and then one for your actual message. Um, you're going to put some glue on that circle. And that can be any size you want. Um, you can actually, um, I, I use some washi tape to, to trace to make my circle shape. And um, I'm going to hold that together. And then I'm going to stick this on top to just hold it down. And then you're going to hold it and let it wait and, and dry. I'm going to flip it over. And then um, I've already um, made my message. So you can take a smaller circle and you can put votes for women or suffrage or anything you want, but just decorate that first. And then I also had some craft foam. This is another option if you want to use instead of just um, construction paper. Um, I would use, or some cardstock. Um, glue that together if you want a background, and we'll put that on. So I got it holding. And then you'll let that dry, and it's going to look like this. Um, now to get your little ribbons, you're going to want to do your ribbons before you do your button. I've made two strips of paper, they're about three inches by one inch, and then the little inner strip is um, just a quarter of an inch less. So I made one here, I'm going to take some glue stick. Most of the time you can use glue stick to glue it on. Stick that on there in the center. And then I've made a little dot kind of in the center on this, and then I'm going to put these together. And I'm going to cut a little V shape, and that'll make it look like your ribbon. that. So now you have a ribbon. And then you're going to take your glue stick again and just put some glue at the top of one side. Kind of crisscross them. Make a little V like that. And then I'm going to stick that. Make sure my message right is right. And then glue that on like that. And voila! You have one of your styles of buttons. Um, to add the pin, if you want, or you can even take a ribbon, just a ribbon and loop it. If you want to make it to uh, maybe an ornament, I think I'm going to use mine to make ornaments for my Christmas tree, actually. And um, put that on, glue that on before you put your backing. Now your backing, you're going to want to have um, either a piece of felt or a piece of fabric. And here's a handy way you can do this. You just fold your felt or fabric in half cut a tiny slit and a tiny slit and then you're going to take your safety pin open it up so you know which side is the pointy side you're going to put the non pointy side through those little slits and close it and then you're going to glue it on and there you have it it's done so now, um, let me show you another, get that out of the way, show you another version. We'll do this uh, cockade style of, this is a, a rosette with loops. I've used construction paper, um, but you can use ribbon if you want, but I suggest if you use ribbon, you're going to want to use a stapler because the glue is, doesn't stick as well to, this, to the ribbon. So um, this is the finished one, and what you need to start with is a base. Now, I use actually a laundry <laughs> lid to get my base for this size of button. Um, I also found a piece of cardboard, but you can use a roll of tape. And you can make it as big or as small as you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, 
but you need a base first, and I would suggest using cardstock for your base to make it a little sturdier. But if you don't have cardstock, you can use um, like at the center of a paper plate. That would work just as well. All right, so now um, you're going to need, for mine, I did 10 little loops on the outer edge and 10 on the inside. And um, they're my, my little loops are about two and a half by one half inch long. You can vary that length if you want bigger loops or smaller loops, it's really up to you. Um, so what you do is just, when you have your strips, take some glue stick. I think glue stick works just as well as craft glue and less messy. Make a little loop and then for my outer edge, you can see how I've done this. I'm just going to add that on like that. And then you'll go all the way around with your, and I'm going to put my outer ring on the back of my base. Then I'm going to put purple in the middle of this one. And as you can see, I've started that. And again, I've already made some loops ahead of time, but you're going to go around on the front of your base and in between the loops on the back, you'll just put your loops here. Now there is another way you can um, make your loops a little fancy. Um, I'll show you an example. You can make them look like this to make them look maybe more like a flower. And what you would do is just take your loop, put some glue on one end, and hold that down. And then you're just going to kind of flip it over. And there you have a little loop. And then I can do that loop on the inside like that. You can see that. Then I've already made my little voting pin. So again, you can do it however you want. Um, and I put some yellow on top of a purple construction paper. Then I would put that on. And then I would glue that, once I got all my loops down, I would glue that in the center like that. And for, I've already made some ribbons. So then you would put your ribbons just like we did before. Whoops, my little rosette fell off. Um, you would put it down like that. And then you're going to put your button on with your fabric or your felt and put your pin through it just like I did before. So exactly the same. So that's all there is to it. So hopefully um, you can come up with some uh, different ideas. You can you know, do different combinations of yellow, gold, purple, um, and white. Or you can, like I said, you can use red, white, and blue for just our upcoming election. Um, just be creative as you want. And if you um, have something that you would like to share with us, we'd love to see it. You can just tag us at MHS Learn. Um, and we'd love to see what you can come up with. So. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope um, you get a chance to come see our Beyond the Ballot um, exhibit. It runs through, I think, the early part of 2022. And um, all you have to do is make a reservation, and it's free to come to the museum. So we would love to see you and hope you can learn a little bit more about the women who had an impact on St. Louis and voting. Thank you very much.